that we were all sold was not there either. Odell came to Cleveland back in 2019 with so much hype, but things never quite clicked, whether it was injuries or a poor connection with Baker, just seven touchdowns in 29 games as a Cleveland Brown compared to his best season as a giant. Pretty glaring fall off. One other note, kind of a big one, because it's me delivering the news. Happy 29th birthday today, OBJ. It's definitely going to be an interesting yes. one for you. So, Nick, I'll start with you. What was the biggest reason the Baker Odell experiment did not work in Cleveland? Well, neither side was invested in it working. And so it was never going to work. I. Listen, I, I think Odell is an excellent football player. I think he is at times his own worst enemy. And from the moment Odell got traded to Cleveland, he had a bit of a wandering eye. He, he did not want to be with the Giants anymore, but he did not necessarily want to go to Cleveland. Now, there was a time, particularly early last season, when it looked like it could work. And then, unfortunately, and some would say ironically, Odell got hurt, not on a catch, not on a route, but trying to make a tackle after Baker underthrew him, and he blew out his knee, and from that moment forward, this was somewhat doomed. And so Odell could have done more, but the flip side of this is Baker clearly was not invested in this working either. Baker is not a dumb man. He's actually a very smart man. Baker knew that this week was the trade deadline. Baker knew that Odell had felt underutilized. And in the final game before the deadline, in a game where the team was desperate for points, Odell had two passes thrown his way. The official st stats, by the way, say he only had one target, but he definitely had two because he caught one. And then there's the one we keep showing the highlight of where Baker misses him over the middle on what could have been a big play. And it's not like the Browns Chargers game, Broussard, where Odell was a non-factor, but the Browns scored 40 points. Browns scored 10 points in this game, and they did not prioritize getting Odell involved to try to win the game. So I, I think both sides are at fault. I also think this is a situation where both sides can be better off because of it. So I think both, both parties work to this not working, and both parties are probably glad it's now finally mercifully over. I disagree, Nick. I disagree that they weren't invested. I understand OBJ, he's a big personality. He wanted to be in a big city, whether it obviously wanted out of the Giants, but he loved the New York big city, San Francisco, L.A., those were places he had his eyes on. Um, and I get Cleveland's not that. But I do think he was invested in trying to be, you know, a great football player. And, and I know you're not saying he wasn't. But uh, I think Baker was definitely invested. Like, why in the if I'm Baker Mayfield and I'm going to a team with Odell Beckham Jr. as my receiver, oh, I'm overjoyed. So I do think he was invested in making it work. I think, look, this isn't the sexiest answer. It's not the juiciest answer. But to me, this didn't work mainly because OBJ was injured. Simple as that. His first year in Cleveland, 2019, with Baker, he caught 74 passes for more than 1,000 yards. Now, I know that's not up to his standards for his first three years with the Giants, but that's a darn good season with Freddie Kitchens as the coach, no less. So if Kevin Stefanski's in there, I think he may even have a bigger year. The Browns were one of only five teams that year to have two wide receivers with 1,000 or more yards. So I think that worked. Then the next season, last year, the six games that OBJ was healthy, they went four and two. That's working. I get it that they went on the tear, and Baker especially, without Odell. But they were four and two, five and two, if you count the game he got hurt in, with OBJ. They beat a Dallas team with Dak Prescott, and Odell had three touchdowns in that game. One was a pass from Jarvis Landry. One was a 50-yard run, and then he caught a touchdown yeah. pass from Baker. And they also beat Indianapolis, which made the playoffs that year. So I think it's just been injuries. And mm. that is the main reason. I get it. Baker's not an elite quarterback. 
So he's missed OBJ at times, hadn't hit him when he's open at times. But the main thing, Wilds, is that OBJ, for the most part, was not healthy. All right, so I'm, I'm, I, injuries are certainly part of it, right, Broussard? But I think it's chemistry. And to illustrate this point, I'll tell you a little story. It's an old comedy bit based on the magazines that come out with, like, top heart surgeons in America. And the bit goes, if there's three top heart surgeons in America, that means there's three bottom heart surgeons in America, and they've got appointments <laughs> this afternoon. So the reason I like that story is it illustrates the fact that, we're, oh, that if you're going to compliment people for being great, there has to be a flip side. And Nick, we talk so much about special quarterback wide receiver connections. Tom Brady and Gronk tight end, Tom Brady and AB with Jamar Chase and Joe Burrow. This is the opposite of that. This is the other side of the coin. This connection never worked. If we can show the stat here on how good Baker is throwing to other people. Do I think he didn't like Odell? No. Do I think that Odell's injuries were part of it? Probably. Do I think the main factor is, hey, the way that you kind of play football and the way that I play football don't quite match up. And this is probably too long coming. This release should have happened much earlier. But I think bottom line, this has been a chemistry issue since day one. Well, I think there's one other factor here, and Wild, stay with me on this if you would. What quarterback in the league is most secure in his position with his team and his position in history? Well, that's good. Who is it? Yeah. Well, the GOAT. Brady. It's, it's Tom Brady, right? And what is the point that you have made all year about Brady, Wilds, that he is so secure and so confident, he's playing a game within the game? He's like, oh, okay, let me get this guy involved. Let me get this guy involved. Okay, Godwin hasn't had a catch this half. Let's target him in the end zone or Mike Evans, yep. whomever, right? One could argue the quarterback who right now is, I don't know if he's the least settled, but one of them is the number one overall pick of the draft who won a playoff game last year who is still waiting for a contract. And I do wonder that if Baker had gotten his contract, if he would have been more comfortable early in the year saying, you know what, let's nurture this relationship. Let's, let, let, me, let me check out of a play and run one of those bubble screens that Brandon was always talking about, wide yep. receivers want, wanting to start the game. Let me, instead of taking the easy read, let me force it a little to Odell because I want this thing to grow. Instead, Baker all year has played under the specter of, I got to get that new deal. And the way I'm going to get the new deal is winning. The way I'm going to get that new deal is just uh, I, the, I have to be laser focused on one thing as opposed to kind of being able to multitask like great quarterbacks do. And I do wonder, Wilds, that if Baker's long term future in Cleveland was more secure, if he would have been able to better nurture that relationship and try to build that chemistry as opposed to doing what he's most comfortable with, which is let me throw to tight ends. Let me throw to the running yep. back. Let me throw to my first read. I don't want to sit here and wait for Odell's double move to develop down the field when I might not even have the arm strength to get it to him. I do think that is an underlying factor of this as well. Well, I, I think that's a great point. And Broussard, I think the tangential point to that is that maybe the Browns offense has never been explosive enough to allow Baker to do that. Maybe Stefanski should have opened this thing up. So there is chances to not necessarily throw away a play, but you know what? We'll get him next time. I think when Tom Brady feeds the ball to people, it's like, well, if this one doesn't work out, I know I can get him on, on third down. We saw last night during the blowout, Carson Wentz like, you know what? Time to throw the ball to my center. Once you, once you have a little bit of a lead, you can start making people happy. The whole offensive line celebrates, all of a sudden Carson Wentz is a hero. So I do think the person that's probably getting the least scrutiny here is Stefanski. I know he wasn't there for the whole tenure, but he deserves some uh, scrutiny here for not making the Browns offense you explosive get enough. You get blamed. Well, yeah, I mean, right now they're primarily a running team. They're the best running team in the league. So that's going to be their bread and butter. But while I want to go back to your last point, because I do think it makes sense. And I said,